this week's Top Tips Tuesday. And this week's tip is take your kids or your grandkids into the woodlands for an autumn walk. five or ten quid on some cheap wellies, they don't have to be expensive, cheap wellies, no one wants to do a woodland walk with freezing cold, soaking wet socks and shoes. Old shoes are okay, wellies are definitely better, but for now, let's see what we can find. Our children are rather grown up, so we improvise with Bennington Terriers on our woodland walks. Those guys mostly like to sniff their way around. Equally as happy though to be out in the woodlands. No autumn woodland walk, excuse me Sam, would be complete without searching out a few of the woodlands fungi and toadstools. Such strange beauty. Stop and admire. Probably wouldn't let your children lick them unless you're sure what they are. But for sure, crouch down, have a look at them, see how many different kinds you can find. Wondrous beauty of nature right there. Top tip. Number two for sure. Decked out in wellies, old clothes. Let your kids play in the leaves. Who doesn't love playing in old leaves in autumn? And a bit of mud and a few wet puddles. Let your kids play in the leaves for goodness sake. See if they can find out or you can tell them what kind of leaves they actually are. So we're just looking at the, how the leaves are changing because it's autumn. And I've noticed a beautiful holly there with striking red berries as a contrast. Very, very Christmassy. A bit strange with the blue sky backdrop. That's quite funny because Jackie says to me, oh, look at those lovely red berries on that lovely glossy green leaf of the holly. And I'm like, where? I'm colour blind. I have to get really close to see those berries are red and not just part of the green leaves of the shrub. How strange. Hopefully you kids can see in good colours and you can spot them well. But for you adults, let's just say, as Jackie's really just noticed herself, well on this walk. A woodland walk never grows old. Any time in nature, it's full of wonder. Don't just leave it to the kids. Open your eyes as well. Well, so while you can't take yourself bagfuls and armfuls of the forest home, which really isn't on, is it? But have a listen to what Jackie's got to say. As a child, um, something like this would have been treasure to me. This is lichen and it means good quality air in the area. And I would have collected little bits up like that to take home. Acorns, for example, would have been other bits of treasure. Certainly the holly we looked at earlier with the berries on, which I wouldn't have been able to pick the berries because they're poisonous. Um, but they're the sort of things that you could take a little bag out um, with the children or a basket and see what treasure you could collect from the woodland and the forest and it's just fun things it's a unmapped treasure hunt do you remember jackie when you were kids did you ever do bark rubbings with a bit of paper and old wax crayons yeah i can remember doing that probably more sort of preschool reception age and you could kind of write on what they are couldn't you if you wanted to what trees the bark yeah. was on because it gives you kind of a good, a good kind of stencil if you like of the bark of a tree I can remember learning um, silver birch, there was one on the way down to my primary school and a teacher called Mrs Coates taught me silver birch and on the way down to school I used to peel a little bit off every day for her I probably got to a couple of months of this and the teacher said it's lovely that you're bringing that for me every day but I've got a big pile of it at home now <laughs> she'll leave it on the tree Silver so, birch is like it's got papery bark hasn't it? taking Trevor treasure hunting to the extreme so don't do that. Me being me, I've always got pots and things in my van so we've got our little acorn, we've got a bit of leaf litter off the forest floor 
And just as we found him, we're gonna pop him in there. We'll put some holes in the bottom of the pot so he doesn't fill it with water. We'll put him outside in the garden in a, in a sunny spot. And he'll gradually grow. And in the spring, once this acorn or then an oak tree, a baby, baby oak tree, has his first proper oak leaves, we'll either pot him up into a bigger pot or somewhere out in the garden. But just let your kids, you kids, grow something for yourself, it's wonderful. Next tip, stop, look and listen. See what wildlife you can see in the woods and don't forget to look up into the trees. People tend not to look up. Look up into the treetops and just take a minute to see what moves. Now you probably won't be lucky enough to see as rare a creature as a pine martin, but then again, you well may see something equally as rare or exciting. You've just got to look. Get the kids looking. See what they can see. Their eyes are better than yours. You can't come on a woodland walk without doing some serious bug hunting. It's free, don't forget. Come and have a look. I really hope there's something under here now. Oh, a bit too deep. We've got a slug. Always remember, always remember, if you're turning rocks and logs, flip them back exactly where they were afterwards. Something under there. These ones are a little bit deep down into the soil. A worm, another worm. Hardly successful. Just keep flipping those logs and rocks, but put them back. You'll find centipedes, millipedes, woodlice, slugs, worms, ground beetles, ground beetle lava, who knows what. If you don't know what they are, do some research and have fun when you get home and remember that walk. Do some artwork, do some writing. Just enjoy it all. Come on. So, do you ever remember, did you ever take leaves home and press them in books? Yeah. Or flowers and press and them? And flowers, yeah. All little girls did that years ago. Wow. Well, you yeah. learned so much, didn't you, from doing these hands-on things, really? Yeah, but the nice thing about that is that when you press flowers or leaves and you forgot about them, and then you open that book to reread it or somebody else opened it, it'd be like finding treasure all over again because you pressed flowers yeah. or leaves you'd picked maybe a year or two ago, you refound them. So yeah, I remember you bought me a book a couple of years ago, and as I was reading this old book, a huge maple leaf that had been pressed in there fell out, and I kind so... of thought, wow, how nostalgic. Who, who put that leaf in that book? How amazing. And where was it found? And the yeah, whole story that goes with it when you find treasure. Just get out and look. Come on, Beddington. <laughs> Edie. Come on. Let's Come see on. what else we can find. What lives in here? Jackie says a fairy or a baby troll. I don't know. And I'm not going in there to find out. For me, have a look at these. Bilberries, wild ferns, gorgeous. I was only talking with my dear friend Caroline the other day about the books we read as children and we would have loved this sort of thing. We would have done an investigation into what resided in these little hidey holes. Mm. And we would have explored it and probably written a story about it as well, that kind of thing. You can be very creative after walking the woodlands, can't you? Whether it's art, writing, yeah. all kinds of things. But for now, from Jackie and I, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and we'll bring you more fun, more nature, just as soon as we possibly can. But we're off now to enjoy it through our own eyes. <laughs>